Okay, in this video we are going to look at some of the more advanced features of the accelerometer and also a more advanced way of setting up images and displaying graphics on screen. It's going to be fairly complicated so you might have to pause it a few times as we go through. Now to start off with I thought I would show you um, my solution to the challenge from the end of the last video uh, which was to modify the um, shaky dice program so that um, you can press button A to uh, change, reduce the number of, uh, of sides on your dice and press button B to increase the number of sides on your dice. Um, so uh, if you need to just pause the video, have a look at the, uh, at the code there um, and I will just flash it onto my micro bit so that you can uh, see it in action. Uh, so you can see it's mine's generated a 2. If I shake it I get a 5. If I shake it again I get a 1. It's going to randomly generate these numbers. If I press this button uh, we get some text that comes across. It says sides is now 5. Okay, so instead of six sides on my dice, and I get five. So if I shake it again, we shouldn't get more than um, five on the dice. There's five there, but we will never get a six. If I press that button again, it should say sides is now four. Dun, 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 dun. I, in hindsight, I should have probably set the delay on the uh, display dot scroll. Um, now you'll notice it hasn't randomly generated a new number. We've still got that old number, so there's a there's a refinement that you can make. But if I shake it now, we won't get a five again uh, because the number of sides is now uh, is now four. So um, as I said, you can uh, you can pause the video and you can have a look at my code. Okay, but uh, I am now going to get rid of all of that because we are going to do something awesome. Uh, let's get rid of all of that. Do not need that. Okay, so now what are we going to do? We are going to write a program that will detect... Um, whether you are tilting the um, micro bit to the side uh, and it's going to move a dot around the screen based on that okay there's some fairly complex stuff going to go on uh, the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is how to create just an empty image okay we're going to call it screen because everything that I'm going to display on the uh, on the micro bits screen, if you like, is going to go into this image. So I'm just going to say screen equals image with a capital I and nothing in the brackets. If you put nothing in the brackets, it will create a default image that's got nothing in it. Okay. Now the next thing that we're going to do uh, is I'm going to have a while loop. I'm going to say while true. Uh, I am going to um, display dot show. Um, screen. Now, if I was to run that, I would, no lights would come on, and that's not really what I want. But here's something that I can do. I can say screen dot set pixel. Okay. Now, the way that set pixel works is you plug in the x coordinate and the pl uh, you plug in the y coordinate and you plug in the brightness. So if I want the absolute middle dot on my uh, micro bit to be uh, to be lit up okay um, you can see there's five rows of five and in computer science we start counting from zero so that would be zero one two three four okay so right in the middle is zero one two zero one two so it would be two two so if I say two two nine because nine is full brightness what this will do is set that one pixel to be um, brightness nine and then it will display it okay so if I download this now uh, you'll have to excuse my my USB cables broken so uh, my micro bit keeps disconnecting and reconnecting so I've downloaded that I'm going to flash it onto my micro bit and we should what we should see now is just one bright dot right in the middle of our screen except I didn't actually download the thing so let's flash that again and with luck 
that's what we see. We've turned that one light on. Okay, so now I could change that if I wanted to. If I wanted it to be in the uh, bottom right corner, I could change it to, well, you tell me. What would the numbers be if I wanted to display it in the bottom right corner? How many of you said four, four? If you did, let's try it out. Downloaded that, copy it onto my um, micro bit. And now you can see, boom, there it is in the bottom right corner. Okay. Um, so, how is that useful? Well, it means what we can do is we can continually blank the display and then we can um, set a pixel to be wherever we want, which means we can move a pixel around the screen. Okay, what we're going to do is we are going to um, use a variable to determine where on the screen we are. Okay, I'm going to call it player x. We're going to start off in the middle, player x. You know the difference between x and y? Yeah, x goes across, y goes up. Yeah, so instead of setting my pixel to be 4, 4 or 4, 2, I'm now going to set my pixel to be player x because that's my x position. Uh, and we're always going to be in the middle line. Okay, so it's going to be player X, 2, and it's going to be brightness 9. Okay, so when I download that now, it won't look like much has changed. We're just going to get our uh, pixel in the middle of the uh, screen. But the difference is we now can control the player's position. Boom, there it is. Now to start off with, I'm going to tie it in to the buttons. Okay. Ooh. So, I am going to say, uh, well, I'm going to do all of the movement before I actually do the, uh, the displaying of the thing. Okay, so we're going to say, if button A dot is pressed, Okay, so if button A is pressed, we're going to move our player to the right. So we want to subtract 1 from our X position. Okay, player X equals player X minus 1. Okay, that's all there is to it. Now, if the position is less than 0, we're going to get some errors when we try and set the pixel. So we need to have just a quick check. We're going to say if player x is less than 0 okay you know the difference in less than that's that's less than that's greater than okay is less than 0 we are going to just set it to um, to 0 okay um, we're not going to bother tying in the the B button just yet so now that we've set it up so that if we press the A button we are uh, uh, reducing the value of player X. We're then set in the screen. Okay, we are then going to display um, display dot show screen like that. Can't type today for some reason. I'm going to download that. I'm going to flash it onto my micro bit. There we go. So now, here is my micro bit. I'm going to press button A. Oh, what's happened? It's instantly drawn three dots across the screen. Is that what we wanted? Well, okay, let's think about what's going on here. It did it instantly because the while loop is going to execute as fast as it possibly can. Okay, it's it's operating millions of times a second. So we want to slow that down a little bit. So at the end, we are going to say sleep 200. Okay, that will wait uh, 200 milliseconds uh, in between each loop. So that gives us some time. 
Let's just download it again and see what happens. Let's put it on the micro bit. Okay, so now when I press my button A, okay, it's it's a lot better, a lot more responsive, but it's still drawing that line. We want to erase it every single time. And the way that we do that, right at the very start of our while loop, we're going to say screen dot fill zero. Okay, what screen.fill does is it looks at the image that we've got, in this case screen, and it fills it with whatever value we've put in here. Zero means turn all the lights off. If I wanted to fill the screen completely uh, with full brightness, I could do screen.fill9. Okay, if I did screen.fill5, it would uh, it would light them all up with, with value 5. Okay, so there we go. So now when I download it, we should find that um, when I press the button it will move me along uh, and uh, we won't leave trails behind where we've been okay so if I press the button it's moved me along and it hasn't left a trail that's great what I want to do now is when I press the B button I want to go back you can see where this is going right this is your challenge at the moment we've got it's all set up so um, we set up our position, we uh, blank the screen, we then check to see if button A is pressed. If button A is pressed, we reduce player X by 1, okay? Um, and if player X is less than 0, we're going to reset it to 0. And then we are going to um, set the pixels on the screen. We're then going to show the screen and then we're going to sleep 200 milliseconds. Okay? You need to add something in here so that it checks to see if button B is pressed. Okay? It's going to be very similar to this lot here. But instead of reducing player X, it's going to increase it. And instead of checking to see if player X is less than zero, it's going to check to see if player X is greater than four. Okay, so pause the video, see if you can puzzle out a way to um, get your B button working. Okay, and hopefully you pause the video and now you're coming back just to double check that your answer is correct. Let me show you. We're going to have an elif in there. Elif button B dot is pressed. There we go. We are going to say player X. Now, instead of saying player X equals player X plus one, we can do it a quick way. We can say player X plus equals one. OK, that's the same thing. Right, so I might change this one up here as well. Instead of saying player x equals player x minus 1, I can say player x minus equals 1. Okay, it just makes things a little bit neater. Okay, so now we're going to say if player x is greater than 4, player x equals 4. Okay, so now... Let's have a look at what's going on. We set up our screen to be an image that we can manipulate. We can change the values of pixels on there. We set up our X position here, player X equals 2. We are running a continual loop, and we are blanking the screen, checking to see if A button has been pressed. If the A button has been pressed, we're reducing the X position by 1. If X position goes below 0, we just reset it to 0, so we don't go off the screen and cause errors. If button A is not pressed, we're going to check to see if button B is pressed. If it is, we're going to increase the X position by 1. Um, and if the X position is greater than 4, we're going to reset to 4 to stop us going off the screen that way and causing errors. Okay. Once we've handled all of the, uh, the buttons that we're pressing, we then set the pixel on the screen to be whatever the current player's X position is. Uh, it's always 2 because we're on that middle row. Okay, and then we're setting the brightness to 9. Okay, if we were changing the Y position, obviously we would have a, a variable to handle that. We then show what's on the screen, and then we wait 
200 milliseconds um, just so that um, you know it doesn't go crazy fast so if I download that now and I'm gonna have to try and get my USB cable working again there we go nope there we go okay uh, let's flash that onto my micro bit do 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 okay there we go we can now move left and right boom 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 and if we hold down the buttons we sort of like move along um, as well pretty cool obviously you can make it move faster by changing the uh, the the sleep here okay um okay great but Mr. Smith, you said at the start we weren't using the buttons, we were going to use the accelerometer, and yes, you are right, okay? I wanted us to get the framework in here first using the buttons, which is something you're familiar with, before I then show you how you can use the accelerometer, because we only have to change these two lines, okay? All we're changing to is instead of saying if button A dot is pressed we are going to check the accelerometer and find out how much it's leaning over to the left okay so instead of if button A dot is pressed we're going to say if accelerometer dot get X Okay, get X will tell you how much it's tilted in the horizontal plane. If it's tilted to the left, it's going to be a negative number. If it's tilted to the right, it's going to be a positive number. So we're going to see if it's less than minus 20, let's say. So it's tilted, I think that means 20 degrees. I might be wrong. So if it's tilted 20 degrees, we're going to say, yeah, it's, it's leaning over to the left. Okay, and then you can probably guess how this is going to change. If you can, just crack on and do it. If you're not sure, then here we go. Things to watch out for. Obviously, we're changing this to accelerometer.getx. Okay, we're checking to see if it's greater than not minus 20, but 20. Okay, so instead of using the buttons, we've used the... I've, I've spelled accelerometer there, wrong then. Accelerometer. Accelerometer, yeah. You've got, really got to check your spelling, otherwise uh, things go crazy. Okay, so instead of using the buttons, we're checking to see if the uh, micro bit is tilted to the left. Now, obviously, you've probably noticed when you did the other programs where you were checking the gestures to see if it was... Um, uh, left or right. You had to tilt it loads to get it over there, okay? Setting 20 on the accelerometer means you don't have to tilt it that much. You can fine-tune these numbers, just work with whatever you think um, is, is best for you, okay? So I'm going to download this, just test it out and make sure that it works, and then I've got a challenge which is probably going to be fairly difficult, okay? It's something that you're going to have to really think about. So, I am flashing this across. Fingers crossed this works and it doesn't make me look completely stupid. Hey, it works. Okay, so here's my micro bit. You can see if I tilt it to the side, the light sort of, it's almost like where you can, you can sort of try and balance it in the middle there. Okay, pretty neat, right? Now, you can probably guess what the next challenge is going to be. Right at the moment, it's all one dimensional. Okay, we've got an X position and we're always moving left or right on that line. I want you to introduce a new variable I call, okay, called player Y. Okay, that's going to start off at two as well. Now, I'm not going to tell you the rest of what you need to do, but you're going to have to have some stuff in here. Okay, we're checking to see if we're moving on the X plane. You need to have another if down here, which checks to see if we're moving on the Y plane, right? And you need to think what's going to be changed, yeah? And down here, you're going to have to think, right, I'm not just displaying the pixel at player X, comma, 2, comma, 9. It's going to be player X, something else, okay? I want you to try and get it working so that instead of just tipping your micro bit, 
uh, left and right and having the dot move left and right I want you to be able to tif tilt it up and down and have full two-dimensional movement of your light okay that is your challenge and that is not an easy challenge so there's house points in it for anyone that manages to get it done by the end of the lesson best of luck everybody and I'll see you next time